My name is Jamin Gurker. I'm a realtor in South Central Alaska, and my mission is to help you to build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching you in real estate. And today, what we're going to be talking about are the 10 negative aspects of living in Alaska, where if you can't handle these, you might, you might want to reconsider moving here. So these are going to be the 10 things, and obviously there's things you can do to minimize each one of these, um, but we'll go and jump into that in just a second. If you haven't done so already, do make sure you give this video a like and make sure that if you're not subscribed already, you go ahead and do that so you, you can receive more content like this in the future. Now, let's go and jump into the 10 things where if you can't handle these negatives, you shouldn't be planning on moving to Alaska. Thing number one is that if you are somebody who really needs to have that year round sunlight, then Alaska is probably not gonna be a great fit for you. I mean, it's very much a um, clickbait saying that Alaska is just completely in darkness for like four or three months out of the year. I'm not sure what it is. And and the, the far north and Fairbanks where they, they tout that. But realistically, yes, it's still gonna be dark for long periods of time, even in South Central Alaska. So that's really what you get when you go to a Northern climate. Uh, for some people, it's perfectly fine. Other people, you know, you need happy lights, you need, um, a lot of stuff to just make sure that you're you're good in the darkness. So that's number one. Number two is the cold. Um, this should not be a surprise as again, but it's going to be cold up here in Alaska. Not as cold as what you're seeing in all the the videos talking about. Oh, it's negative. You know, 50 in Alaska right now. Usually those are going to be climates a lot further north and like Fairbanks. Keep in mind. Alaska is about two and a half times the size of Texas. So yes, you're going to have parts of it that are going to be cold. In the south central part, it's going to be more mild. Now it's still going to get pretty cold from time to time. I think the coldest it's gotten this this winter has been like negative 10 or something like that. So still pretty chilly and not exactly going to be Miami, but it is definitely going to be a lot warmer than, than what you see on the clickbait talking about how cold it is in one part of the state. So don't just assume one area is categorizes the entire state. It is such a diverse climate. Number three is that it is actually pretty distant from the rest of the lower 48. And for that reason, it kind of feels like you're living in a separate country every now and then, just because it is so difficult to go and visit people on the lower 48. You can technically drive, but you have to go through Canada and uh, they were not particularly making that uh, an easy process from everything that I've, I've gathered from people who have recently done it. So yes, it can definitely feel kind of isolated up here every now and then. So um, if that's what you're looking for, if you're trying to get away from people, then that's great. Um, it's just something you have to be aware of going into it. Number four is that Alaska really doesn't have much of a hopping nightlife over here. So if you're really into the party scene and you really like kind of that, that lively nightlife, like in Austin, Texas, or a lot of places over on the, over on the East Coast or California, then Alaska might not be the, the place where you get a little bit of it in, in Anchorage, but you know, realistically, there's not much of a, not much of an active nightlife here. <laughs> which, you know, again, depends what you're into, but if that's important to you, might be something for you to consider. Number five is that if you really need like big name shows, like, uh, oh, I don't know, I'm just gonna throw some people out there. Um, let's say George Strait or Drake or, you know, any of these big name concerts that you really like to go to, if it's a must for you, then Alaska's might, you might want to reconsider that. Not a whole lot of big name people are gonna come up here for the most part. They might come up, if just because they you know, want the Alaska trip and that's what fine and good, but usually we don't have the huge name people that are gonna come up here on a regular basis. So if that's important to you, again, just reconsider. Let's take a break here real quick. For those of you who've been watching for a while, you do know that I offer a relocation guide for people who are considering moving up here. If you'd like that, do make sure you just reach out to me on the website down below. And when you're filling it out in the comment section, just make sure you say relocation guide so I know what it is that you, you're looking for that I can help you with, put your number in there. If you want me to answer any of your specific questions, I cannot keep up with emails at this point. So do make sure you put your phone number in there. We can text back and forth if that'd be better for you. And for those of you who are looking to kind of get a little bit more of an immersive experience and see what Alaska is all about, do check out my Alaskan Journey podcast. Link for that again, gonna be in the description section down below. And I interview people who live up here and have lived up here for years about 
their experiences, what the cost of living is like up here, their pros and cons. So you get some, some different perspectives in there. So do make sure you check that out. And without further ado, let's go and finish today's video. Now this next one, really does bug me as an investor up here and that is that the property taxes at least in kind of the municipality anchorage area are high and this really annoys me because the state and the local governments really don't have any other way to collect taxes and revenue for itself other than property taxes and this really bugs me because it's a really unfair distribution of of trying to leverage taxes from people because um, they don't have sales tax, income tax, all these other taxes. It's just property owners, which is really an unfair way to do it. Um, now, that being said, there are usually most parts of the state, at least here in South Central, don't really have the sales tax or you know income tax. So it kind of balances out, but still it's an unfair distribution of, of the tax burden. Number seven is that it is really difficult to get stuff delivered up here. If you are used to like the Amazon two day delivery or something like that, kiss that goodbye. That is not gonna happen in Alaska. It is pretty much like shipping something to a different country. Okay, you need to take a look at the, at the map and just get a sense for just how far out Alaska is. We are legitimately, we are closer to Russia than we are to the rest of the US. <laughs> you really look at it. If you look at the at look at the southeast and then you look at the the west, yeah, we're I think we actually are closer to Russia in some places than we are to the US. So we're a ways out there. Number eight is that it is an expensive cost of living up here. Now, not nearly as expensive as you would find with a lot of other places, and the wages are gonna be higher, so it's not like you're going from you know the wages in West Texas to cost of living in Alaska and you're just gonna have to figure it out. Wages are gonna kind of keep up um, to a certain extent, but yes, cost of living is still gonna be higher compared to places like California, Hawaii, a lot of other places over in the Northeast. It is gonna be a lot, 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 lot lower than what you find in those places, but still it's gonna be an expensive cost of living. So plan for that. All right, now this next one, I know there's a chance I'm gonna get into some hot water for this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. The crime here can definitely be a strong negative. Now, I hear all these articles across the country, people talking about the, the high crime rate in Alaska, which is fair, it is a high crime rate, but also I think it is very, very lazy statistics that people are using to come up with their numbers because they're not taking into consideration the extreme end of the scale that Alaska is in its population compared to the rest of the US. Yeah, there's only about 700, about 730,000 people who live here. So when somebody does a crime, the crime rate obviously is gonna way overcompensate for that up here compared to where it would be somewhere else. So let me give you just some numbers that are gonna give you a better sense of comparing apples a little bit here. Okay, so let's take a look at Alaska across the board. We saw roughly about 32,000 crimes committed across a state that is two and a half times the size of Texas. Okay, that's that's like saying, oh, I don't wanna to move to Tennessee because in Georgia, there's, there's a lot of crime, okay? It's an enormous state. Number two, the crimes in Texas for the year 2020, like we were looking at, was about 782,000 crimes committed, which means that, yeah, obviously way more crime over there. Every, Everyone makes their own decision on what they're comfortable with. Make sure you check the crime map yourself in any area that you're living to, compare it to where you currently live and get a better sense for where you're gonna feel comfortable. Me personally, I go to places in the lower 48 and I feel less comfortable than I do up in Alaska in most places. So, you know, do, do your own research. That's just something to think about though. A lot of those stats aren't taken into consideration. The extreme end of the scale that Alaska is on and also just the sheer geographic size of it. I mean, you know, like I said, two and a half times the size of Texas. So it's not like, yeah. Okay, well, I'm done talking about that. Moving on. Now, number eight is that the seasonal depression will get to you for some people. You know, like I said, there are a lot of people who are really gonna struggle with seasonal depression up here. And unfortunately, you're probably just not gonna know until you get up here and kind of experience the, the long, cold, dark winters. For some people, it's no problem at all. They love the winter, that's their favorite time of year. And there are other people who really kind of struggle during the winter months. It's, 
you know, it's just something you kind of get used to. I, you know, personally um, do kind of struggle a bit with it myself. And, you know, you just got to make sure you stay engaged with people. You try to make sure you're, you're taking vitamin D supplements and make sure that you're engaging with everything that's around you. You cannot let yourself self-isolate around this time of year because that's that's really where the seasonal depression really does start to really does start to snowball after that point. So these are going to be the things that you need to keep in mind if you're considering moving to Alaska. If you can't handle these, then you might want to reconsider moving here. Not necessarily, you know, just something you need to just take off the table completely, but you know, these are just things that that you do need to consider. So thanks for watching. Um, if you do want to get in contact with me, do so through either my website down below, Facebook, or slide into my DMs on Instagram. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.